Welcome fellow artists and explorers. I hope you brought your passports because today we're flying to Paris, France. We're going to explore that gigantic stone building located right in the heart of Paris. This building is more popular than the Eiffel Tower and it attracts about 13 million people every year. The building is called Notre Dame and it took 182 years to build it. Let's walk around the cathedral, soaking up the glorious stained glass windows and those airy Gothic stone arches that gracefully bridge the empty spaces and meet in the middle at the keystone. When this cathedral was built in the Middle Ages, there were no architectural drawing programs, no cranes to hoist everything up, no nail guns, no steel, and yet Notre Dame stands as a stunning example of the lightness of stone. You are wearing your comfortable walking shoes, right? That's good because it's 387 steps to get to the top of the South Tower. As we get closer, you might want to use your binoculars to see all of the statues on the front facade. See that round window? That's one of the three rose windows. We'll take a closer look at that later on. Come on, let's head to the front doors. There are three sets of doors to choose from. Above each set of doors are carvings that tell different stories. These carvings contain hundreds of faces. I'm starting to understand why it took almost 200 years to build Notre Dame. There are so many details to look at. Here is the round window we saw earlier. This is called a rose window because its design is similar to the mini petals of a rose. Let's take a quick look at it from the inside with the sun shining through. Look at all that beautiful, colorful stained glass. Notre Dame is very lucky because it has three of these rose windows. Each of them are 32 feet in diameter. Now it's time to start climbing the tower, round and round and round up the stairs until we reach a landing. For those of you that have read the book or seen the movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, this is where Quasimodo lived with his friends, the gargoyles. Some gargoyles are long and skinny with their shoulders hunched over, hungry for their next meal. While others are chomping on grapes and chicken, looking very well fed. Make sure to get a picture of the gargoyle on the left, Le Strige. He is the most famous gargoyle of all of Notre Dame, as he is pictured here overlooking his city below. Next, let's step into the belfry and check out the 11 great bells of Notre Dame that are rung every hour. Each bell has its own name. This is the Emmanuel Bell. It weighs about 13 tons or two or three elephants. This bell is only rung on special occasions because it is the only original bell to the cathedral. As we continue climbing up the next steps to the top of the tower, we can check out fabulous views of the cathedral spire flying buttresses that keep the church from falling down, and gorgeous views of Paris in all directions. At nighttime, Notre Dame glows a beautiful gold color. Can you find two of the rose windows? Can you see the tall, tall spire? Sometimes a colorful light show is projected on the front of the facade. Now that we've seen the outside of the cathedral, would you like to see the inside? I imagine it to be just as beautiful and detailed. Unfortunately, right now it's not possible. On Monday, April 15th, 2019, as you and I were beginning spring break, smoke and flames were seen coming out of the cathedral's attic. Notre Dame was on fire. She burned for half a day. It took 400 firefighters to put the fire out but the roof and spire both collapsed. So Notre Dame is closed to visitors right now. Thankfully, all three rose windows survived and the city of Paris is already working hard to rebuild the symbol of their city. Let's create a fun, colorful picture of Notre Dame Cathedral at nighttime. 
we'll start by creating the paper that Notre Dame will be on. Let's start by creating the basic outline. If you take away all the crazy details, you'll notice how the cathedral is made up of a series of rectangles. Place and trace the larger rectangle across the bottom of your paper. Then slide the rectangle up so that it is stacked on top of the first one and trace it again. Use the smaller rectangle vertically to add each bell tower up at the top. Let's pause our drawings here for a little bit and have some fun. To create the colors from the light show, we're going to paint wet on wet style. First, I'm going to wake up my paints by putting a little bit of water on each of the cakes that I'm going to be using. Then I'm going to paint my paper with just plain old water, making sure to get the paper really wet with just plain clean water. Then before that paper has a chance to soak up all that water, gently tap your brush filled with paint onto the surface. It's so interesting to watch these colors blend and spread on the wet paper. You can use any of the colors you would like, but I suggest you avoid using dark colors like black and brown. We are going for a bright colorful effect after all. Notice that I'm using one color all over my paper before I wash my brush and switch to a different color. This will help me fill up my paper as quickly as I can before that paper dries. Make sure to fill your entire paper, even outside the outline that you drew. Cover the entire thing with dots and dots of color. On your second paper, to make your starry background, use a toothbrush and a piece of scrap cardboard. Practice pushing that toothbrush's bristles across the edge of the cardboard and down towards the black paper a few times. If you go the other direction, you're going to splatter your shirt. Then dip the toothbrush into the white paint and splatter the paper for a great starry night feel. Now that your painting is dry and you have the basic structure of Notre Dame sketched out, it's time to start adding columns, windows, doors, and details. Start by retracing the outline so that we can see it a little bit better. For the rest of this, you can freehand it or you can use a straight edge whenever you need it. Now, before you panic about all these details, take a deep breath and study the handout that I gave you. Remember how we saw the outline as rectangles? Try and find simple shapes in the columns. What type of line is used to make the arch doorways? Gothic style arches and windows typically have a point up at the top of them. Notice how symmetrical Notre Dame is. So you know that that means whatever you draw on one side should match the other side. Remember that ultimately, this is your interpretation of Notre Dame, not the actual building. So if you don't draw a door or a window or something, that's okay. Just make sure that your drawing is symmetrical and have fun. After you're done drawing all those beautiful details to Notre Dame, carefully cut out your drawing with a pair of scissors. Cut just outside your drawing rather than right on your line. This is going to leave a small border and keep your drawing intact. Add small dots of glue to the back side of your picture and glue your drawing to your starry background. Then you can sit back and enjoy the colorful light show.